Hey guys, welcome back to the Steph Dress Comments YouTube channel. I'm so excited to be putting out yet another video for wedding and event planners. So today I'm gonna to cut straight to the chase. We're talking about five acronyms and five terms that you should know as an experienced wedding and event planner, right? Like these are the terms that you should know. They should be buried in your head. You should know them. These are the things that are gonna get respect from your vendors that you're working with and everything else. And Actually, there's a full list of 25 acronyms and terms that you should know as an event planner. You can download it using the link in the description. So the link in the description is there. Go there, download the full list of 25 items because today the five terms that we're focusing on are going to be terms uh, kind of focus on hotels right now no matter what kind of event you planner you are whether you focus on weddings whether you focus on birthday parties whether you focus on corporate or brand activations at some point you're gonna have to work with a hotel. So I decided to focus on five terms that everyone should know for this video uh, for working with hotels, right? But there's a full list of 25 that's gonna help you with working with, again, hotels, other vendors, and just making sure that you are you have all the elements together that you need, right? To plan all different kinds of events. So make sure you download the guide regardless. But for the sake of this video, we're focusing on just five, all right? Now, before we go too much further, I want to introduce myself. My name is Faye Shala. I am a wedding planner and designer. I'm actually a computer engineer turned wedding planner. It's a long story how I got from A to B, but I am the owner of Statuesque Events. You can see Statuesque Events right there. We plan beautiful weddings and events for corporations, entrepreneurs, and brides and grooms across the United States, right? So we've done weddings and events in Connecticut, Florida, DC, New York, even Vegas and Texas, right? So we do events all over and we want to be your event planner if you're watching this and you're not a planner. Also, if you're watching this and you're an event planner or an event pro, I want you to know that we coach wedding and event planners in our program called Planners Who Profit. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a business program for wedding and event planners, all right? So all the information about how to join us there, how to apply to join us and everything is also in the description box. Y'all, the description box has lots of jewels, so make sure you explore those links and learn more about us, all right? But for today, we're gonna talk about five terms that you should know, especially when you're working with hotels, but every experienced event planner should know this, right? The first term we're gonna focus on is an RFP, okay? RFP, RFP. That stands for request for proposal, all right? A lot of times, especially if you're a more experienced event planner, you're gonna be using different software, different technology to put out RFPs to multiple hotels and multiple properties so you can compare and select the best option for your client. An RFP is basically putting out all your needs. You should already know the needs for your event, right? You list them out together and you send that one RFP to multiple people so they all respond and then you get to sift through and decide which one is the best fit for you and, and, and proceed forward, right? We use RFPs for our clients. We also use RFPs for our own internal events like Planners Who Profit Live that happens every year in April. Again, links are in the description. Make sure you join us there. But RFPs are a gold mine when it comes to comparing different properties and selecting the right one for your clients. So that's something that you want to know. And basically, as a response to the RFPs that you put out, a whole bunch of hotels and properties send you proposals that you get to review and then you can decide the right one for your clients. All right. Now the next term that you need to know as an experienced event planner is the word attrition. Okay. Attrition basically speaks to the number of room nights that you are liable for, right? So let's say you go out, you get a room block, right? Your attrition is what you're liable for. In most hotels, this is somewhere between 70 and 80%, meaning that if you reserve 10 room nights, you are liable for uh, for making sure that 80% of those are filled. Otherwise, they're gonna charge your credit card, <laughs> whatever credit card on file for the balance. So let's say you reserve 50 room nights at a venue, right? or at a hotel and your guests only use 30 of them, right? That's 60%. And if you're liable for 80%, they're gonna charge you for those that balance of rooms. Now you can always sell those rooms to other people if people register late, but the whole hotel is basically saying you are financially obligated to them for 80% of that room block. This is a really important thing to know because I know a lot of people who are nervous about planning events because they know people who got tripped up in this. You gotta make sure that you look realistically about how many people are gonna be coming to your event so that you negotiate room blocks that are realistic and your clients don't get hit with crazy attrition numbers, right? Another 
term that you need to know is room night, okay? A room night is actually pretty simple. So if you reserve, let's say you reserve 10 rooms for two nights each, that is a room, that is 20 room nights, right? Because that's 20 room nights that you have available in your block, right? And again, attrition kind of gets tied into this as well because with, if you have 20 room nights, your attrition clause is probably gonna be somewhere around 16, which is 80%, right? So your room nights is the number of total rooms over all the nights that you have within your room block. Another term that you need to know is your pickup list. Now, again, if you, for you to be like an attentive planner, for you to um, help your clients to market, to remind people, to help people to fill up their room blocks, you need to know what a pickup list is. So a pickup list is something that you can request from your hotel at any time, once you have a room block, and ask them for the latest pickup list. It'll list the name um, and the number of room nights that each person has booked within your room night. So you can always look and say, hey, we're at 30%, we're at 50%, we're at 10%, of our obligation to the hotel by just looking at the um, by just looking at the pickup list, right? When you request it from a hotel. And last but not least is my favorite, which is a BEO. Okay, BEO stands for Banquet Event Order. Okay, and what that means is that when you're doing, especially an event at a hotel where they're catering, they're giving you room nights, they're providing AV, they're providing tables, tablecloths, all that, the BEO lists every single thing that the hotel is going to be doing for you. It's really important to review this in detail because the staff at the hotel that's going to actually be running your event is in many cases, not the same person who put that BEO together. And they're gonna be following to the T what it says on that BEO, the, t the color of tablecloths, the number of tables, the number of chairs, the floor plan, all of that stuff. So you gotta make sure you review your BEOs, make sure that it's accurate, and then you have to sign off on it, right? And hotels will always send this for to you, and once you sign off on it, that's what their team is gonna run with, all right? Now again, I wanna remind you that I just ran through just five, which is only like, 20% of the actual number of acronyms and terms that I want to share with you, all right? To get the full list of 25 terms and acronyms, what they mean and how you can work with them in your business, visit the comments box, download the freebie, all right? And then also make sure that you respond in the comments and let me know how helpful this was for you, all right? So again, I can't wait to see you in a future video, all right? Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on a future video. And I can't wait to see you guys in future videos, all right? Cheers and enjoy the rest of your day.